Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about Dell Precision T5810 memory upgrades and how to properly configure the system. So normally we just hop right into our videos and get going, but hey, it's late up here. We're staying to help everybody out with uh, learning a little bit more about these systems. And first off, thank you to anyone that subscribes and likes our videos. We really appreciate that. So what I wanted to do was a digital cheers to everybody. And what we like to do around here is a one minute beer. So hit pause on your video, go grab a beer, come back and let's do a one minute beer together. All right, you ready? All right, let's go. I got my timer right here as well. Three, two, one, let's go. I feel like kind of it's a little tradition around here to, to do the one minute beer if we're having a, you know, a Christmas party or a holiday party or anything like that. We like to, you know, all the guys like together and have a, have a good time. So we've got 35 seconds, gotta stop talking. I'm doing pretty good. Hope you guys are getting close because we're down to 23. All right, I finished. We got it done at, uh, there's 10 seconds left. All right, you got to finish. You're down to five seconds. All right, well, thank you guys for uh, indulging me and uh, having a little fun before we get started on our video. So um, let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling. The T5810 uh, takes two series of Intel CPUs, the E5-1600 and the E5-2600 V3 series CPUs. There are, there's one CPU total, that's it, and it's an LGA2011 socket. There are uh, eight DIMM slots and it accepts DDR4 memory. You can put in uh, 2133 megahertz, you can put in 2400 megahertz, or you can put in 2666 megahertz. It accepts sizes of 4, 8, 16, and all the way up to 32 gigabytes, which means that the max that you can put into this machine is 256 gigabytes via 832 gigs at 2666 speed. So uh, let's go ahead and, oh, one other thing I'd like to know before we, we get in is that it only accepts ECC registered. A lot of the machines um, around this generation take ECC registered, uh, also known as RDIM, as well as load reduced, known as LRDIM. However, uh, this machine actually does not accept LRDIMs. It only accepts ECC registered. I feel like a lot of people run into that issue and want to know that. So before we get in here, I wanted to, to note that. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, I want to show you a little bit about, uh, more about the memory channels, uh, how to properly configure it. But before we actually open the machine, I always recommend uh, putting on your ESD gear. And we're back now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. If you are using this machine at home and you do not have ESD gear, I recommend two things. One, do not um, open it up on top of carpet. Uh, carpet definitely will lead to electrostatic discharge and uh, can give you issues. Um, and I also recommend, um, you know, go and touch a piece of metal. They always uh, you know, say that if you touch a piece of metal, especially I think it's copper, uh, that'll help you with uh, just kind of removing some of the discharge. Um, so just a couple of simple things that you can do at your house to uh, protect the machine. But anyhow, so let's go ahead and open it up. So just like most machines, uh, there's going to be a latch right here. You're going to lift the latch. Uh, for lack of better terminology, there's um, hinges on the side. Not real hinges, but there's uh, little notches that allow it to uh, come up and down like this. And then you're just simply going to take the top off. Pretty simple. All right. Uh, now that we are in the machine, I want to note a couple things for you. Uh, as we discussed, there there's one CPU. Uh, currently, the CPU has the heat sink on top of it. Uh, if you're not familiar with heat sink, that's just there to uh, help uh, dissipate the heat and keep the processor cool. Uh, to get to the dim slots, which there's four on this side and four on this side, you're actually going to have to do a little bit of work. Uh, a lot of times, there's just an air baffle that you can lift up. Unfortunately, this is... Um, uh, a little bit more difficult, nothing that you can't do at home. Um, and I even say for you know people that aren't uh, you know necessarily computer technicians, you can definitely do this. It isn't that hard to do. You just need to know the proper steps. You can watch this video and knock it out with ease. So anyhow, to get started, uh, you need to lift this latch up right here, and it's going to slide out. And there's these uh, two notches right here that you're going to lift and pull up. Okay. 
I like to, I mean, if you want to, you can disconnect all the cables. Um, I personally just set it to the side and I try to be extremely careful just to not mess anything up because I don't want to have to uh, disassemble everything. Um, and then you're going to notice there's two air baffles or air shrouds, depending on your terminology. Um, they, you don't have to lift one or the other up uh, first. Uh, they're interchangeable. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start with this one right here. You'll notice there's a tab. You just simply pop the tab and you're going to want to lift up. Okay, and be careful for the cable here. And you'll note that there's uh, this little uh, plastic notch right here. It goes into this hole, so when you want to put it back, that's how you're going to put it back. So we'll show you that at the end. Same thing over here with this air shroud. A little plastic piece that you put back in. Okay. So now that we have the air shrouds out, uh, you can you're fully accessible to get to the RAM. Uh, so one of the things that I'd like to note uh, is that there are uh, four memory channels and there are two DIMMs per memory channel. The memory channels start with the white DIMM slot on the outside uh, for each processor. So for instance if you were only putting in two modules like it's currently configured what you're actually going to want to do uh, to have the best uh, balance is put uh, the, the modules on the uh, outside white slot. If you're putting in four modules, then you'd want to use all four of the white slots. And again, this is just to have a proper balance of load uh, across your memory channels, okay? And of course, what I actually recommend for a machine like this is put in all eight slots, um, and that way you're gonna get the maximum performance. And that's actually what we're about to do is we're gonna load this up to 256 gigabytes. Uh, we have some uh, 32 gig uh, 2666s over here. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to take these out. So one thing I recommend when you're removing modules, um, you don't want the module when you pop this tab right here to come flying up, which can happen. And if it comes flying up, you could do one or two things. It could potentially damage the board, uh, which isn't very likely, but it can, especially since there's some of these uh, ICs and semiconductors and capacitors that are laying around uh, the motherboard, or it could uh, damage the module itself, which if you want to resell the module you're taking out, or if you want to use it for something else, you don't want to obviously uh, damage the module. So I always put my hand on top. And then that way, the module doesn't come flying out. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and remove this one as well. And as I discussed, we're going to go ahead and put in 256 gigabytes. So one of the things I like to do also before I start loading uh, any machine, um, once I have everything cleared out, I like to uh, take all these tabs and I like to push them down so they're fully open um, because I see it too often when somebody is uh, trying to do this with one hand and they're holding the module with the other hand one you're probably holding the module improperly or two uh, you could accidentally drop the module or damage the module because you're fumbling around over here so just little things to make your life easier I also recommend um, if you're maxing it out I'm actually going to start on the inside the black slot just because that's the tightest squeeze right next to the heat sink so if I were to fill these three first and then fill this last it just makes it a little bit tougher again just simple things to make your life easier not that you have to do it that way you can do it any way you want as far as if you're maxing out build it any order you want but okay one other thing I wanted to note is when you are filling these mo uh, uh, filling up the module or filling up the slots uh, there are um, every single module is going to have a notch or a key right here uh, that's there for a reason it will prevent uh, users from putting in the wrong module for instance you can't put in a uh, DDR3 module onto this machine um, you can't put in a DDR2 module onto this machine uh, basically just prevents users from putting in the uh, the the uh, the wrong dims and it also is important to note because the module is not in the center so if you put it you flip it the wrong way again you could damage the leads or potentially damage the module so you just need to make sure you have it uh, face the right way so that way you can properly put it in so as I discussed I'm going to start on the inside just to make it a little bit easier on myself so I'm going to go ahead and pop this in and when you put it in you'll, you need to hear a click so listen right here so that click lets you know that the module is fully inserted. Uh, I see it, um, unfortunately, all too often a user thinks that a DIM is bad, and it's actually not bad. What it is is um, they didn't fully seat the module. And sometimes they'll even think it's two DIMs because it'll throw the whole channel off uh, when they have the first slot wrong. So um, anyhow, just things to note to make sure you, you're doing it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and load everything up right now. Okay, 
is it actually flips on this side, so something to note so that you don't insert them wrong, as we were just talking about. And just like that, voila, we're done. So you can see in a matter of a couple minutes, you can easily load this machine uh, and, and max it out and get a heck of a lot more performance out of it uh, than if you were just running with, you know, say 32 gigs or something like this total. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together uh, and show you how to uh, uh, reassemble it so that way you don't run into any issues. Um, actually, this is the last thing you need to do. Uh, so first things first is to put back the uh, air baffles. Um, so as we talked about, there's this little notch right here. Uh, so you just need to make sure you put it in. And you'll also notice this tab lines up. Right perfectly here. And it pops back under, so you need to pull it back under to get it in perfectly, okay? Uh, same thing over here, make sure you put this in. cables and be safe coming back down and then the same deal this tab lines up properly right there just pull it back down and you're fully in okay so now I got the air baffles on and we're all good to go um, as far as this is concerned there's two little notches right here you just need to line it up drop it in and then push it forward okay and then push this latch down and you are fully good to go so just like that you can uh, you can get in this machine it might look a little bit difficult at first but really like I said anyone could do this you don't have to be a computer technician uh, so this is something you're wanting to do for uh, your home system uh, I would highly recommend it and if you have any questions uh, you know please feel free to reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com and our team of ninjas could help you out with anything you need so thanks again for stopping by and again please uh, hit the subscribe button down below have a great day